Hi guys, I am here with Carl from a Crooked Dice. Oh, Crooked Dice Miniatures. Crooked Dice Games Crooked. Design Studios, the full title. Crooked Dice will do. De Crooked Dice Games Design Studios. Mate, they've got a Kickstarter about Dracula. Turns out he doesn't come with an inflatable belly Lugosi, but I'm looking at the stretch goals to see if anything appears in there. How's we going foot pump? <laughs> nice, nice. So look, for people that don't know, tell us a little bit about Crooked Eyes Miniatures, the kind of miniatures that you make. Yep. We've been around for about 12 years now. We've got about 1,300 pieces in the range, plus a load of uh, terrain and vehicles and stuff as well. Vehicles in, in support of? In support of the game yeah. um, and uh, for, for the model kits. Um, most of our stuff, uh, is inspired by the kind of varied worlds of, uh, of cult TV uh, yeah. and uh, and movies. Uh, and so if you like sort of vintage Adam West era Batman, then your system might allow you to play that. The 7 TV system is basically, if there's a TV show yeah. or uh, a movie that you thought, I'd love to get that onto the tabletop, yeah. or you've got some weird figures at home that you've never found a use for, you'll be able to play that with 7 TV. Right, so uh, as a system, because you mentioned it twice, so you've got a couple of boxes there, it's not a war game. It's not you're not playing a battle scenario. You're playing a movie. Okay, so uh, it's very hard. It's a simple, small-scale skirmish game. Cin right. Cinematic skirmish is the way that we um, describe it. The conceit that we have is that you're making a TV show and a thing. So rather than having a hero, a champion, and a soldier, you've got stars, co-stars, and extras. Right. Right. So. Um, and it plays through so, so that the, But the corporal can be the star. The corporal can be the star if you want to. Um, yeah. And I always describe the system a little bit like Lego. You can kind of bolt it and reconfigure it um, however we like. Right. So yeah. uh, it appeals to a lot of sandbox players. Yeah. Um, in each of the boxes, there are over 100 different profile cards, which right. are archetypes. So for our inch high spy fire, you've got a flamboyant agent. And depending a on- flamboyant agent. One that might wear a dinner jacket and a bow tie. Yeah, and all Maybe that. ride a motorcycle to a really famous theme tune. Exactly. Mm. So it could be, you know, James Bond or Jason Bourne or Austin Powers, depending on the flavor of the game that you want to play right. or the miniatures that you might have available. Yeah. Um, and it's just meant to be a fun, it doesn't take yourself too seriously at all. Right. And it's meant to just be a fun, knowing, nostalgic nod to all of those kind of shows and, yeah. and films that we all adore. So. So if you want to play something that more sort of 60s, 70s theme, yeah. like the, maybe the Avengers or something, yeah. is that kind of camp element, is, that, is that built into those kind of box? Yeah. Because if I can sit and show the guys here, you have two components, right? You've got the core rules, and then you get your kind of theme pack or genre pack, yeah. is it? So as I say, the core box, that's generic. That's got 100, well, the fantasy one we've got has got 230 profiles. And we've had four box sets that we've had out, in Chai Spy Fi, so that's your camp 60s, 70s action adventure shows and movies. Right. Apocalypse, which is your you know, your road warriors and your zombies and, and right. a bit more gritty. Perhaps with Mel Gibson pages. involved. Exactly. Yeah. Centre V Pulp, which is Indiana Jones, Flash Gordon, right, that kind of thing. And then we did Fantasy, which pretty much speaks for itself, you know, kind of right. epic yeah. stuff, whatever you like. So they're the four that we've done so far. Next year we're going to be doing 80s. So that's the core, they're the core boxes. Mm. That's great for your sandbox player. What we found is a lot of people said that's great, but I haven't got a lot of time to set it up. I just want to sit down and play something. So that's basically that's a scenario pack, is all that is. Right. It's it, we call them we call them feature packs, and that's three adventures and specific rules where we can theme it and tone it even more for a particular idea. So this right. is Home so guard, so you, everything in this pack you could have built from the car rules, but this is like a load of pre-generated archetypes. Yeah, so it'll templates. be named characters rather than the generic stuff that you're getting out of that. And we can right. have fun components that we get in there for, you know, this is home guard versus vampires. So we can play on some of the kind of tropes that you've got on that. And right. try and, that's what we try to do. It's, like, it's a basic skirmish game, but we try and get the theme and the tone and the tropes that you kind of recognize mm. bedded in as much as we can, all of the mechanics and, and the gameplay. Nice. So let's take a moment to talk a little bit about your Kickstarter then for anyone that, yeah. so what, so what, if people want to get into TV track, this, is this like, from Nosferatu right through to very contemporary stuff. This is more like a feature pack. So this, uh, what we've done, we're working with Dacus Stoker, uh, who is the great grand nephew of, right. uh, of, of Bram Stoker. 
It's 125 years um, celebrating Dracula this year, right? And they've got their own. Um, there's something called the Stokerverse. They're doing various games and comics and oh, really? sort of multimedia company celebrating that and trying to celebrate the authentic Dracula. Right. So they approached us to say, would we like to do a 70V version of it? Um, so we've adapted the novel. We've done that with Edge Hill University, who I've worked with for the last four or five years. And we've got a group of interns that came on that we interviewed and brought in. Um, and they helped develop the game, but staying true to the novel. So we've looked for spaces in the novel where we could turn it into a skirmish because you know it's an exchange of letters it doesn't necessarily yeah, lend yeah, itself yeah. to it as, so. as a librarian i tell you that the novel is actually a bit dry by modern standards it, 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 it's it's a fantastic story but there are uh, to a modern reader see i think his approach is quite modern in the way that it does it it does it as like an epistolary you know an, an exchange of things um but uh, but this dollar but um it's uh yeah, there's not many fights. There's a lot of, mm. you know, sitting next to bed waiting for people to die. Yes, you know, yeah, blood transfusions and, yeah. and, so, and talking about the horror of it all. It's like the most exciting bit of the book for me is when Jonathan goes to the castle in the, like, the first third of the, of the novel. Yes, but, yes. Um, and sees the truth of, the, the, of it. But yeah. that's just dra him seeing horrifying things and dragging yeah. the back. That's not a war game. So no. we looked for places where we thought the narrative could be explored a little bit so yeah when jonathan escapes from the castle and goes to the convent right we went okay let's do the escape as he kind of rushes through a transylvanian yeah. village and we worked a little bit there but we've tried to be as true as we could but while adapting for the form really because otherwise it would, it would just yeah. it would fall apart yeah you know? This is kickstarting now for release next year. Uh, yeah, it ends. It, it's got about two days left, which will end Tuesday night. By the night. time you see it, the kickstarter's either 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 going to happen or not. Oh, I'm God. sure it's going well, is it? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. it's not too bad. We've but people can still buy into a Kickstarter after the date's passed or not? not we will sure. get the pledge manager out fairly quickly after it and if they want to come in as a late backer then yeah absolutely that's still, no problem at all they can do that for a good couple of months. And there's a range of miniatures alongside this? There's 30 odd miniatures that go with it um, and also a standalone rule book so we take out some of the material that's in 7TV Fantasy mm -hmm. and say if you're new to the game and you just want to buy in at a cheaper point there's a little core rule book which just steals the thing down as well as the feature pack for it. So, so that's, a big, that's the big release that's going on at the moment. Are you in a position to tell us anything about something down the line a bit more yeah next year once Dracula's fulfilled um, we'll be doing we're gonna slightly reformat 7 TV we're gonna roll back to a core rule book that you'll be able to play across all of the sets that we've had out mm -hmm. um, the world's a different place than when we started a few years ago and financially yeah. the boxes card um, stocks a lot more expensive to everything's a lot so more far. expensive so you're looking at rolling back to a model with a rule book and yeah. then and then it, tokens and stuff you can buy as extras yeah and want. we'll take the sort of cards and some of the mechanical bits that are in there and put it into a genre pack which will also be in these nice little vhs cases so yeah. you, can, you can buy the theme that you like a little bit easier and so we've got those four games and then you get theme tokens rather than generic ones back because exactly. yeah. three of those things are out of print at the moment because of the cost of reprinting it and yeah. doing new stuff so that'll be i'll bring those back to our loyal sim tv fans all as well. right sounds great looking forward to seeing some of this stuff thank you especially my inflatable belly lugosi <laughs> all right take care thank you Cheers. thanks a lot guys thank you Bye -bye.